Okay, good morning, everyone. We are going to present the guide for Office 365 tenant to tenant migrations. My name is Pablo Galan. I'm a senior technical strategist here in Big Titan. I joined the company six years and a half ago. Uh, I started as a support engineer, and after two years, I changed to the pre sales engineer team. And uh, in this team, continue uh, working with all the, all the partners, especially with the distinct partners. Okay, in today's agenda, we are going to talk about Bit Titan. Office 365 tenant to tenant migrations when changing the domain name. Uh, within this scenario, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about our new coexistence service when migrating from tenant to tenant and changing the domain, and the other scenario while keeping the same domain. Okay, what about with Titan? We were founded in 2007. Uh, we currently have more than 160 employees across uh, several countries. Our headquarters are in Bellevue, in Seattle, in uh, Washington State. Uh, we have served more than 33,000 uh, customers uh, all this time. We have migrated more than 11 million end, uh, users across 150 and, um, plus countries. <clears throat> Our customers love migration with for any project sites. Uh, here we can see several quotes from uh, several partners uh, doing small projects, medium projects, and enterprise projects. Migration with migration with is the industry leading 100% cloud based migration software that helps you get email and data from nearly any source to any destination. It's very easy to use, well supported, secure, automatically scales, serverless install. We are a completely software as a service platform and we are a battle proven technology. <clears throat> With a migration with and the user migration bundle, we'll be able to save money when migrating multiple uh, workloads for a user with a bundle license. Uh, this will help both revenue with multi-workloads projects and deliver a superior cloud onboarding experience to your customers with our user migration bundle. Tenant to tenant is almost always a multi-workload migration scenario, so the user migration bundle is key to successful tenant to tenant migrations. This license is applied to the user and it's good for one year after purchase date. With this uh, license, we'll be able to migrate mailboxes, user mailboxes, resource mailboxes, share mailboxes, personal archive, uh, which can be PST files or exchange online archives, personal documents, wonder for business to wonder for business, SharePoint online to SharePoint online, and finally, we'll be able to use Deployment Pro, which is our desktop agent, uh, to automatically create a new Outlook profile connected to the destination mailboxes. So also allows Outlook configuration. In, the, in this migration scenario, uh, all the workloads supported are mailboxes, user mailbox, uh, resource mailbox, share mailbox, and also archive mailbox of each of the users. <clears throat> Deployment Pro, as I said, the, the desktop agent to automatically configure the loop profile, OneDrive for Business, SharePoint document libraries, Office 365 groups, uh, both uh, mail conversations and documents, and finally, public folders. In tenant to tenant migrations, we have uh, a set of advanced uh, features that we can apply to the migration projects. Notifications. We can email uh, for send emails for successful and failed migrations. Multiple sources and destinations is completely cost customizable. We also have the ability to apply date and folder filtering. Move data where you want want it to go. Common scenarios is to clean up and place X amount of data into archive mailboxes based on on date. Folder filters allow you to migrate only the folders that you want to 
or the content the content of a PST file uh, under a, a subfolder of destination. We also support litigation whole migration, and recoverable items, SQL login. Uh, we can connect the migration projects to an Azure SQL uh, database and unlock all the events during a migration process in that SQL database. It's important for a, a, a chain of custody. Also, we have available uh, developer resources. We have a, a, a PowerShell SDK that all of our customers can use and, and create custom scripts. We can also uh, offer third-party integrations with other platforms. <clears throat> we also offer data center regionalization. As the, we use uh, several Azure uh, data centers across different countries. We live in Azure, so we can process uh, your tenant to tenant migrations in, in Azure. We have uh, our data center in, in several deployments, the general deployment. Also, we have another deployment for China uh, called V1, uh, 21 Vnet, and uh, we have also a German instance. And we don't uh, have added support costs. So the support is completely free. Okay, so for tenant to tenant migration for mailboxes, we'll be able to migrate the user mailboxes. Within the user mailboxes, we'll be able to also migrate the recoverable items folder, usually to the destination recoverable items folder. We can also migrate the archive mailboxes, the resource mailboxes, and share mailboxes. Deployment Pro, remote Outlook profile reconfiguration. Make Outlook configuration painless and enhance your migration service delivery. Add remote Outlook configuration to any migration project for a great customer experience. Configure Outlook 100% remotely so you don't have to visit any desktops or devices. Manage the configuration directly from your web browser. Just automate, automate and relax. Agent-based -based configuration that runs locally on the desktop. Install the, the agent silently via Grow Policy object so that the end users only need to enter their passwords and restart the Outlook clients. Deploy and configure profiles on your time without customer frustrations and a flood of support tickets. This is setup and configuration. Deployment Pro makes the configuration easy without the need for any admin credentials, training, or expertise. You can check reporting, configuration statuses, break errors, and more, completely remotely and in real time. Customizable and simple uh, desktop application. The desktop application is automated to recreate the Outlook profile. All the users has to do is enter their credentials, upload uh, a logo, to upload your company's logo for use in the Deployment Pro Wizard that runs on users' computers, enter a message to display a customized note in the Deployment Pro Wizard that runs on the user's computer. Import the signatures from the previous profile. Any signatures that were included in the previous profile will be imported over and included in the new profile. Reattach any non-password protected PST files that were attached from the previous profile and also imports the autocompletes from the previous profile. There are also several features that we can turn off, turn on to enable each of these migration features. Okay, for one day for business, we can migrate documents, folders, and permissions. Migration with will be able to provision the one day for business profiles for each user being migrated. Sharing permissions set on destination, even if the user identity is not match, and uh, we'll have a complete set of advanced options to support various migrations. SharePoint. For SharePoint, we support only uh, basic SharePoint migrations, document library to document library. We can migrate documents, folders, and permissions. Everything else is not migrated. This is a migration scenario that we offer completely for free. 
So no need to purchase licenses for these SharePoint to SharePoint migrations. Public folders. We can migrate from public folders to public folders or for public folders to share mailboxes. Uh, we have uh, advanced options also to bypass issues with exchange online public folder mailbox size limitations. Best practices while keeping the same domain name in a tenant to tenant migration. Limited to cutover migration. Since the Manity domain can only reside in one Office 65 tenant at a time, so we can only use the cutover uh, strategy. Vanity domains can only reside in one Office 365 tenant at a time. The vanity domain needs to be removed from the source tenant and added to destination tenant during the cutover. Plan for a Azure AD Connect change. If you are using an Azure AD Connect to sync on-premises Active Directory, plan for those changes. You can sync to the destination tenant until the vanity domain is added. Azure AD Connect uh, has soft matching capabilities, so explore creating cloud-only accounts, migrate, adding the vanity domain, flipping the primary UPN and SMTP address when adding the vanity domain, and then start the Azure AD Connect synchronization, which, if set up correctly, will soft match the accounts based on UPN. The users should first be added to the MSP Complete platform using the vanity domain, and then um, a user migration bundle can be added to each of the users. However, before be beginning the migration, the user addresses should be changed to use the Microsoft domain names at both at source and destination, rather than the vanity domain names. This will prevent my major change uh, to the migration of these projects when the vanity domain is removed. A destination will have new mailboxes, so new UI, so a new profile needs to be created. This is a very important step for Office 365 to Office 365 migrations. It ensures that emails have the ability to be replied to, even after the full Delta migration has occurred, because they will be mapped to the new destination domain rather than using the old source domain of Microsoft account name which will no longer be available once the tenant is applied. Finally, the one for business sync client needs to resync the, the documents. So we uh, won't be able to configure the, the sync client. Each of the end users will have to reconfigure the sync client. OK, well, changing the domain name, we can use since we are going to another domain, you can choose to cut over or, um, or state the mailbox migrations. Plan for mail routing between the two tenants and set up exchange organization relationships between the two tenants. If you are staging the migrations after the user has been migrated to the new tenant, you can flip their mailboxes to mail contacts with an external address of the new destination tenant. This will allow and migrated users to send email without non-delivery reports and allow for pre-VC lookups between the tenants. If you are using Azure AD Connect to sync on-premises Active Directory, plan for those changes. The users will need to know their new UPN SNTP and SIP addresses along with the password for the new tenant. The users should be added to the MSP Complete Platform using the source UPN and license. The migration with projects can be updated to change the destination UPN with a bulk change. All look profiles need to be recreated. We can use also recipient mapping. And the one for business sync client needs to resync all the documents. Well, in this scenario, while changing the domain name, we can uh, use a new service that we launched this month tenant to tenant coexistence service. This service will allow uh, customer and users to see the users on the other side, including their free VC status and their contact details. There are two steps. The first step is setting up the tenant to tenant coexistence project. We have to enter the source domain, the destination domain, the license we, uh, we want to apply to the destination users, 
and the service uh, will automatically discover the users from the source and import them into the project. Uh, we'll create mail enable contacts for each of the users on the source at destination. And the free busy calendar sharing and contact sharing will be set up on both, as, um, on both source and destination. After that, we can start the pre-states and full migration passes. For the mailbox being migrated, the mail enable contact will be removed from the destination. At that time, a mailbox uh, will be created for the users and uh, the license selected in, during the configuration stage will be applied to the, to the mailbox. A mail forward will be automatically set up from the destination to the source for the pre-stage migration. And once we switch over the users to the destination mailboxes, a mail forward will be automatically set up from the source to the destination to complete the Delta migration. So this service will perform all these steps automatically. Okay, we have also support options. Uh, for any uh, question, we can go directly to the VTitan Health Center in help.vtitan.com, uh, which is plenty of QB articles, migration guides. We have also the VTitan University with several courses. And we have also developer resources. If some of the customers are interested in using our PowerShell SDK, we can provide sample scripts and all the command led uh, reference. We have also a VTitan World Class support team, uh, which is uh, completely free via mail or via chat session. Uh, the, SL, the official SLA is 24 hours, but usually, depending on the support volume, we'll get a response within the first six hours. And also, we have the technology strategist team. Okay, I'm going to perform a demo for a tenant to tenant migration, which will consist of four steps. Set up the migration in MSP Complete. In MSP Complete, I need to create a customer, the endpoints or connectors to the source and destination tenants, license the users. After that, I need to configure the device management agent. This is the desktop agent that I have to deploy on all end users' computers via GPO or via email, this agent is going to have installed the Deployment Pro wizard. The Deployment Pro wizard is the, the wizard that will allow end users to automatically create the W profile for them. And finally, we are going to create a migration wish project to migrate the mailboxes from the source tenant to the destination tenant. So the first thing we have to do is going to MSP complete, vtitan.com. In vtitan.com, we can sign up for a new account by clicking on sign, sign in, in this button here on the top right corner. By clicking on sign in, we can create here in register for free a VTitan account. After receiving the confirmation email, we'll have to click on the link. And after that, uh, we'll go back to this login page and provide the VTitan credentials. Here we have two options, VTitan Migration Wish and VTitan MSP Complete. These are the two platforms that we currently have. Uh, we can understand MSP Complete for the migration purposes as the customer management platform, where we'll be able to create customer instances and add all the entities belonging to that customer, which is to say all the uh, connectors to the source, to the destination uh, tenants, all the um, email addresses, deploy the desktop agents, etc. And migration with is the migration platform. Some of our customers, um, all customers, when we didn't have a the MSP Complete Platform, uh, keep going directly to migration with. My recommendation is starting with MSP Complete. 
So in MST Complete, the first step is going to create a customer. By default, when creating an MSP Complete account, a work group is created. Under this work group, we can invite other people to this work group by sending an invitation with different roles. We can invite other people to work with our work group with different roles, administrator, manager, associate. <clears throat> After that, under customers, we can create a customer instance. This is very important, is the basic unit, is the context where we'll be creating the connectors, etc. To create a customer, we have to specify here a primary email domain only for indexing purposes within the customer library and a company name to identify the customer. Once we have created the customer, we can click on the customer name to access the customer dashboard. <clears throat> here, usually the first step is creating the endpoints. The endpoints, as I said, are the connectors to all the source and destination systems we currently support. If we click on Add Endpoint, from this drop-down menu, we'll see all the systems we currently support. For a tenant-to-tenant -tenant migration, we need to create two endpoints per each of the workload uh, we want to migrate. For example, for mailboxes, we need to create two mailbox endpoints one pointing to the source tenant and another one pointing to the destination tenant. For documents, we have to create another two endpoints, one there for business at source and one that I wonder for business D2 at destination. And for SharePoint Online, we have to create another two endpoints. There is also another endpoint, Office 365 groups, if we want also to migrate. Uh, mail conversations and documents uh, from Office 65 groups to Office 65 groups. Okay, so for this project demo, I'm going to create a Office 365 mailbox endpoint. Here, I need to specify the global admin credentials and uh, the password, the global admin account uh, email address and its password. For the one for business at source, we also have to provide the global admin account. But the destination, we need to use the V2 connector, the version two. The <clears throat> V1 connector is using the CSOM API. The CSOM API um, is suitable for the source, but uh, is not uh, uh, is not uh, recommended for the destination. At destination, we need to use the new Microsoft API uh, for migration purposes. So we have to use the V2 connector. Here we have to specify the a global admin account and its password, and also an Azure storage account name and the primary access key. With this B2 connector, we are going to migrate in a first step all the data from the source uh, one for business accounts into an Azure Blob container. And after that, the Microsoft uh, Azure Migration APIs will uh, ingest the data from the Blob container directly into the uh, destination one for business accounts. The same for SharePoint Online endpoints. In this case, we have also to specify the team site URL for each of the team sites we want to migrate. And at destination, using the V2 connector, apart from specifying the URL, the team site URL, and the global admin credentials, we also have to specify an Azure storage account name and primary access key. And that's it. With all these endpoints, we'll be able to migrate all the data from the source tenant to the destination tenant. One example of a source of its 365 endpoint is this one. Okay, you can see here a global admin account and its password. Okay, next step is importing the users from the source tenant. We have several mechanisms to import the users. We can add the users one at a time by entering here the first name, last name, and primary email address. In case the user principal name is different, we can also specify here the user principal name. We can import all the users directly from a CSV file. We can download the CSV file from here, from this link, populate all these columns, and after that, 
select the CSV file and import all the users. But we have two automated ways of importing the user email addresses. One is through an endpoint. We have created a source of its 365 endpoint and a destination of its 365 endpoint. By selecting the source of its 365 endpoint, using the admin credentials, the global admin credentials, we'll be able to import all the user mailboxes, all the resource mailboxes, and all the shared mailboxes. All, in, all these email addresses will be automatically imported pro, from the global address list. So no need to populate a CSV file and import the CSV file into the customer instance. And also the last method uh, to discover the users automatically is via our desktop agent, our device management agent. When migrating from tenant to tenant using migration WIS, uh, we'll be recreating the items at destination via the exchange web services api so we'll have to recreate the profile the loop profile connected to the destination mailbox and um, download the migrated mailbox from the cloud to the local ost to automate these steps we can create a grow policy object if the computers and users computers are the do domain join and push out this exe file. Once this agent gets installed on the end user's computers, it will perform a hardware inventory, software inventory, and also will discover all the end user's identities. After a few minutes, you will start seeing here all the user's identities. Okay. Once we have discovered automatically all the user's mailboxes or the resource mailboxes, or share mailboxes, we have to apply the licenses. We can select here the, the users and click on apply migration bundle. This will su subscribe the user during one year period to the platform. So during one year, we'll be able to create as many migration projects for any uh, workload supported by uh, Big Data to migrate data. Okay. I forgot to mention that there is another scenario not covered with the GPO. Um, if we have remote users, these users are using uh, non-domain joint computers, we cannot push out the agent to these um, computers via group policy object. We have to import the users, and after that, after importing the users, we can send automatically an email to all of these end users. We have to click select the user's email addresses and click on enable device management through email. Here we'll see the email, the email preview that is going to be sent to each of the end users. The end user will have to click on this link and download the agent and that's it. After that, we'll have to configure the agent, a schedule when we want to trigger the wizard for, for the Outlook profile reconfiguration, and then user will have to provide their destination of its 365 mails, and that's it. Okay, so to recap, we have created in MSP Complete, which is the customer management platform, we have created one customer instance, we have added the endpoints, the connectors, to the source and destination tenants, one connector at source and a destination per each of the workloads. So one mailbox connector, one document uh, connector for the one for business accounts, another document uh, connector for the SharePoint online uh, documents, and another connector for the Office 365 groups. And after that, after adding endpoints, we have imported the um, mailbox email addresses into the customer. At this point, we have to launch two more platforms, Migration Wiz from this app launcher and Device Management. Migration Wiz is to create the migration project, one project per each of the workloads, and Device Management to configure the desktop agent, uh, which will launch the wizard to the end users. Okay, we can start with device management, I always recommend starting 
configuring with the device management agent because when deploying the agent, uh, there might be uh, antivirus or firewall rules that might block the connectivity between the desktop agent and our platforms. Okay, so I click on device management. And at the same time, I'm going to launch also migration list. So this is the device management dashboard will, where we'll be able to configure the desktop agent. I click on the customer name. Here we have two desktop agent modules. By default, when installing the agent, the agent is going to perform a health check for Office 365 readiness assessment. In this case, this module is not needed because we are migrating from an Office 365 tenant to another Office 365 tenant. So we'll assume all the end users computers are already compatible with Office 365. But anyways, this module will perform a readiness assessment. It will uncover incompatibilities with the all client versions, with the web browsers, and with the hardware in case we need to install the Office Pro Plus. And the second module for this desktop agent is called Deployment Pro. Deployment Pro is the part that will help uh, configure the all clients for all end users from a centralized place and in, in a remotely way. Okay, the first step is going to settings. Here we have to specify the destination UPN, Office 365 UPN domain name. So if our destination email address domain is bitetan, we have to specify here bitetan.com. And also from this drop down menu, we have to select the destination of its 65 tenant where we are flipping the W profile to. Here, we have to select uh, how we want to treat the expired or temporary passwords. There are two scenarios. If all the users are pure cloud users, they are not synchronized with a local ID, we have to select the first option. This will <coughs> enable users with temporary or expired passwords to set their own passwords. If we have all the users, Office 65 users, synchronized with the local ID, we have to select the second option. So this is for the scenarios where we have I, I should ID connect, enable, password sync, etc. After that, here there are several switches that we can turn on to disable some of those migration features. For example, by default, we migrate out of auto complete entries to the new Outlook profile. We can disable uh, this feature. We can also disable the PST reattachment to the new profile is if the old profile uh, has several PST files open, but we don't want those profiles, those PST files to be reattached to the new profile. But uh, migrating those PST files directly to the archive mailbox, we have to enable this advanced, uh, this switch. Okay, and other switches, like for example, this one to force the Outlook client to be started the first time in safe mode. Also, we can customize the wizard. We can upload a logo. This is the wizard that end users will see once we configure the desktop agent to launch the wizard. We can customize this logo. We can upload the customer logo and we can specify here a custom message. Okay. We can upload the logo from here and we can enter the custom message here. Well, after that, I click on save and continue. I think there was a lot of questions. Okay, and I need to uh, schedule when we want to trigger, trigger this wizard. So remember, we deploy the desktop agent, the device management agent via group policy object, if all the computers are domain join, or we deploy the agent via email, if the uh, users are remote users, and we can push out the agent via GPO. 
once the agent has been installed, we have to configure when we want to trigger this wizard, this little wizard for the end users to provide their password. So here we have to select the users uh, who <coughs> have the uh, device management agent installed on their computers and click on the schedule cutover. If at the time we are configuring the schedule date and time, we don't know exactly where we are going to change uh, the old profiles we are going to force the end users to uh, start working with the new pro, uh, mailboxes, we can uh, schedule this um, this wizard to a date and time in the future. Later on, when we exactly know uh, where we are going to uh, switch over the users, we go back to this dashboard and uh, schedule to the right date and time. After that, I click on the schedule cutover and the agent will be a schedule uh, for the wizard triggering. Okay, in parallel, when creating, configuring the OLU client, when configuring the wizard for the OLU client uh, configuration, I have to create the migration wizard project. This is done in the migration wizard platform. Here, I have to create a project. This is a brand new uh, migration wizard account. I have to click on create project, and here I have to select a mailbox project for the mailbox migration. If I want to migrate also one day for business accounts, I have to uh, select document project. If I want to migrate SharePoint Online to SharePoint Online, I have to select a document project. If, for example, I want to migrate the Exchange Online Archive mailboxes to the Exchange Online Archive mailboxes, I have to select the personal archive project. Also, if we uh, have several PST files, we can also create a project of type personal archive. Okay, I'm going to select mailbox project. After that, I specify a project name. So tenant to tenant. Under customer, I need to select the customer I previously created from MSP complete. I can also create the customer from here. When I mentioned that several customers uh, keep logging in directly into Migration Wiz, is because they can also create all the entities directly from Migration Wiz, and these entities will be synchronized to MSP Complete. But it's much easier uh, starting with uh, the customer creation directly from MSP Complete, and after that, select the customer from Migration Wiz. Okay, source settings. I have to select the source endpoint. Destination settings, I have to select the destination endpoint. Okay. If we are migrating from one domain to another domain, we can enable the tenant to tenant coexistence service that I mentioned during the presentation. Okay. This will automatically uh, import the users from the source tenant, uh, create user batches. Um, per each of the source users, will create a mail enable contact at destination. Once we are ready to submit a user batch, each of these mail enable contact will be converted into a mailbox. Um, we'll apply the license to the, to the mailbox and we'll migrate distribution lists, mail enable security groups, Office 365 groups, security groups, and dynamic distribution groups while we are migrating the user, the user batches um, while enabling Mail flow coexistence and PVC and kind of coexistence. All these steps will be automatically done by the tenant to tenant coexistence service. I'm not going to go into much detail at this time. So I'm going to create a tenant to tenant migration project without using the coexistence service. Okay, under the project summary, I can see the project type I'm creating an Office 365 to Office 365 mailbox migration project. Here I can see all the items that will be supported. We'll be able to migrate contacts, calendars, mails, journals, notes, tasks, and roles. At the bottom, we can access the migration guides, explaining step by step all this um, demo. Okay, I can click here, for example, while keeping the same domain. I can open here the migration guide. After that, I click on Save Project to create 
an empty project. Once we have created the project by providing the source and destination endpoint, we'll be able to establish a, connect a connection from the source and destination tenant. The next step is import all the users from the MSP complete customer. I had previously imported all these users from the previous customer that I created. I click on save users and close. And we are going to import all the users into the project. <clears throat> if we are migrating from tenant to tenant and keeping the domain the same, we have to use both our source and destination the on Microsoft.com email addresses. I'm going to delete this one because this is not belong. We have to use the on Microsoft.com email addresses, both at source and destination. Here we can see that all the email addresses have the same domain. We have to change the destination domain. Imagine the destination on Microsoft.com email address is this one. I select all the mailboxes and click on save. Automatically, all the destination email addresses will be changed to the destination on Microsoft.com email, email address. <clears throat> so the migration from tenant to tenant while keeping the domain the same must uh, be done using the Microsoft.com email address. We cannot use the vanity domain because at a certain point in time, we have to delete the vanity domain from the source tenant and reattach it to the destination tenant. So we will have to go back to my recent ways and change, will change all email addresses uh, to move the vanity domain from the source email addresses to destination email addresses. To avoid that step, we'll be using the Microsoft.com email address. After that, we can start the migration process. We select all the mailboxes, we click on start and we verify credentials. With verify credentials, we'll be connecting to the source mailboxes through the uh, global admin credentials uh, stored in the source endpoint and will validate the connectivity to each of the users mailboxes. And the same for the destination mailboxes. Once all the mailboxes uh, have been validated, we'll be able to start the migration process. Okay, here after a verified credentials pass, we'll see the status change from not submitted to a complete verification. After that, we can start the migration process. Usually, we recommend following a pre-stage migration strategy, which consists of at least two migration paths. One migration path called pre-stage migration before the user switch over to the new tenant. Here, with the pre-stage migration path, we'll be able to migrate only emails, but emails older than one month, two months, three months or a specific date and time. The idea is to migrate the majority of the mailbox site to the destination mailboxes during the first pass. Okay, we can also, we can also uh, schedule the migration pass by providing here a date and time. So we can submit all the mailboxes and wait for the migration pass to start. Once we have completed the pre-stage migration pass, we have to remove the domain from the source tenant. We have to run a PowerShell script, a script uh, provided in the migration guide on the source of a 65 tenant. This script is going to remove the vanity domain from all the tenant objects. And after that, we can delete the domain from the tenant. Once the domain has been deleted, we have to wait for the replication, and more or less one hour. After one hour, we can reattach the domain to the new tenant. Once the domain has been reattached to the new tenant, we can finalize the migration. We go back to the migration we sprayed and click on full migration. Full migration is going to migrate everything else. All the contacts, calendars, journals, notes, tasks, rules, and all the recent emails. And after this migration pass, the migration will be completed. At the same time, I'm submitting the full migration the deployment pro wizard should be triggered to all end users uh, screens. So the end user, at the same time I'm submitting the Delta Pass, will have to follow this wizard. 
they will have to provide their destination of a 65 password. Once the password is provided, then um, the wizard will create a brand new profile connected to destination mailboxes. Okay. There are several advanced options that should be added before the migration is started. For example, in the advanced options, we can apply date range filtering, folder filtering. We can select if we want to migrate the mailbox directly to the archive mailbox, to the active mailbox by default. We can set, set the maximum number of concurrent migrations by default is 100. In a tenant to tenant migration, we can migrate up to 400, 500 concurrent mailboxes. And also here we can apply advanced options. One important advanced option for this scenario is called recipient mapping. Here we have to specify the source tenant on microsoft.com domain to the vanity domain. All these advanced options are explained in the migration guide. So the idea is before starting the migration, read the migration guide and specify here the advanced options. So we don't forget any of these advanced options. Okay. Well, I can go back to the presentation. Okay, next step. To get started for free, you can uh, register for a BitTitan account. This is the URL. <clears throat> After that, you can purchase mailbox migration license or user migration bundle licenses. There is a, a big difference between these two my, uh, license modules. Mailbox migration license only allows to migrate mailboxes which will be capped at 50 gigs. If we want to migrate more than a mailbox, for example, we want to migrate a mailbox, an archive mailbox, a PST file, a OneDrive for business, etc., we need to use, and also configure the loop profile, we need to use the user migration manual license. Okay? For that, you can get started. On your next migration project, we can provide you the, all the documentation you need to follow. And we are going to spend the next minutes if you have any questions, okay? So do you have any questions about the migration scenario? Anyone now, any question? I think Pablo, it's all good. Uh, if you can just move this slide to the other one and I can introduce myself. Okay. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much, Pablo, for your informative session. Uh, really appreciate for your time. Um, and thank you everyone for attending this session. Uh, thank you so much for coming out of your busy schedule and attending this webinar. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Arul Malhotra and I am the Ingram Micros Pit Titan Market Development Manager. Uh, what I can do for working with you and being the Market Development Manager is uh, I can assist and work with you on anything and everything relates to the Bit Titan. I can do live demo with you, your team and your end client, uh, be it on site or via Blue Jeans, uh, doesn't matter. I can do the joint calls or calls on your behalf, pitching bit tight into your clients as well. And anything relates to the pricing, do let me know. So basically I'm like your Google assistants, just, but not a, but a real person. Uh, yeah, 
So thank you so much. And my details, you can find it out on over here. You can give me a call. You can give me a buzz anytime. That's my email ID as well for your reference. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Any questions, uh, Pablo is still here. You can ask him. You have further technical questions, you can send me an email. Yeah. I can provide. All right. All right, Pablo. I think uh, we can finish the session. Or okay. Like to so you? thank you very much for your time. All right. Thanks, Pablo. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, Stephen.